Because Aaron is a prototype of our Lord Jesus, and his sons were to picture all of God's people today, their clothes were both simple and eloquent. The phrase used by the Lord was, quote, you shall make holy garments for glory and for beauty, Exodus 28, 2. Glory is the display of divine truth, and beauty is the display of divine character. I hardly think it's true that clothes make the man, but in this case, it came close. Four articles of dress were prescribed for all the priests, and six more for the high priest. Those for the priests, quote, for Aaron's sons you shall make tunics, and you shall make sashes for them, and you shall make hats for them for glory and beauty, and you shall make for them linen trousers. They shall reach from the waist to the thighs, verses 40 to 42. Besides these, the high priest had, quote, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash, verse 4. We'll consider carefully the high priest's outfit, but as far as the regular priest's clothing is concerned, we can see the basic principle. Their outfits were of white linen, clearly speaking of our righteous standing in Christ. Quote, I will also clothe her priests with salvation, God says, Psalm 132, verse 16. When we see all God's people in heaven, look at that. They're dressed like these priests. No, wait. They're dressed like a bride for her wedding day. Quote, to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Revelation 19.8. Do you see the connection? The Lord didn't come to hire employees. He came to woo a bride. Our service for him is not to be from mere duty, but from devotion. Holiness is a love relationship with Jesus. Exodus 39 describes the most remarkable clothing ever made, designed by the one who carved the rose, paints the sunsets, and splashes glory on the autumn leaves. Aaron was privileged to wear it, but really it was designed to picture someone of another line, quote, called by God as high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews 5.10. First, we notice that it was designed to fit a man. For the creator of the universe? Yes, God was manifested in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. And here we discover an inspired illustration of what theologians call the hypostatic union. The first word is simply the English form of the Greek hypostasis, meaning to stand under what is foundational, its essential nature. As in the verse, quote, faith is the substance, hypostasis, of things hoped for, Hebrews 11.1. 1. Or speaking of Christ, quote, the express image of God's person, hypostasis, chapter 1, verse 3. When we add the word union, we refer to the miracle of the Son of God becoming what he never was, human, while not ceasing to be what he always was, divine. One person, but two natures, truly God and fully man. Now look at the ephod, made of two substances, gold, which is not made, but discovered, like his deity, and linen, which grows, like his humanity. When the high priest stepped into the light, his ephod might appear to be only dazzling gold, in the shadows, only linen. But it never ceased to be what it was, one garment woven from two substances. So too, when Jesus slept in the boat, Matthew 8, verses 23 to 27, he seemed all human. But when, moments later, 
he stood up and commanded the storm to be at peace. The disciples said, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? Verse 27, they knew they were seeing the golden threads of deity shining through. This is our sympathetic sovereign. Praise his holy name. 